Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Joe Zanini. I'm a developer evangelist here at WebEx. Today I'm gonna to be going over a, adding a user to your WebEx Contact Center Developer Sandbox. Um, if you don't have a Developer Sandbox, you can request one here at developer.webex-cx.com slash sandbox. Hit this, uh, or actually sign in with your WebEx account um, and hit this request sandbox button. Now you do have to have a, an existing WebEx org in order to get approved for a WebEx contact center uh, developer sandbox. Just something to note, uh, free WebEx accounts right now are not um, uh, getting access to the contact center uh, developer sandbox. Now, once you've requested your sandbox, um, you'll get access to the control hub. So if I go to uh, admin.webex.com, um, I'll be able to log in as the initial admin that I was given you know, as, part of, as part of that request. Um, to the control hub, and I'll be able to take a look at my org, my, my development org. And one thing to note about these development orgs is you get 10 total licenses with a sandbox. Now, the contact center uh, life, uh, sandboxes come with uh, Cisco PSTN, so you can test out features to develop against, like um, the flow designer and have uh, mimic customers calling your call center um, and, and, and testing out digital channels and developing applications with all the various interfaces that you can build with. But sometimes you need more users than come out of the box. So uh, I'm logged into the control hub here at admin.webex.com with those sandbox credentials that I got as a result of requesting the sandbox. And I'm gonna navigate over here to the users tab. You can see I've already created an additional user, but when you get your sandbox, you're gonna have an admin that you use to log in and access the control hub. You're gonna have a, a general premium user and also a, a supervisor um, that you're gonna be able to use. Um, and, and, it's, and they're both functional agents, um, but, but the supervisor gets a different de desktop experience when they log into the agent uh, desktop. So, um, what I'm going to do, as you can see here, I already created another uh, user. I have now six more licenses that I get to play with here. Um, so what I'm going to do is add another agent um, here. Uh, so I'll click on magic, uh, manage users. I will manually add another user and I will say Jack Zanini. And we will give Jack an email name. And we will click the plus button. Uh, Jack was added here um, as an agent, or actually as just a general WebEx user at this point. I'm gonna click next and now I get on to the licensing. The first thing I'm gonna do here is set up the calling. The agents need to have WebEx calling set up. So I will add that license while I'm here. Um, you can see that the assigned numbers option was added as a result of clicking uh, uh, checkboxing this section here. Uh, and then I'm going to add an agent here. Um, I'm going to make uh, Jack a, a premium agent for testing. I'm not going to give Jack the supervisor role. Um, so I will hit next here. And now Jack needs a phone number. I'm not going to really give him a primary phone number, but I will give Jack a uh, uh, I need to select his site. And I'm not going to worry about the phone number, but I will give Jack a extension. And I'm going to say 100. Six is his extension, and I will hit next. So I'm reviewing Jack here, and all I want to do now is just add Jack as a user. <clears throat> now, the next step that I use, you can move on to other steps here, but what I'm going to do is take care of activating uh, or verifying Jack as a user. You can see here he's not verified, so I'm going to now close this window open a new incognito window, and I'm gonna traverse over to Gmail. Um, so I will go gmail.com, and I will um, sign in as my dummy generic Gmail account that I use for sub users. I will log in here. Not now. Perfect. We can see that a new account for me has been created. WebEx Joe, Agent One, has a new so I need to create a, a 
password for this user now. Which is what I did. And it should kick out to WebEx. So what I'll do here is test this. All right, so I'm in WebEx now. Um, I'm not really gonna work about the voice pins and stuff like that. I'm not worried about that right now, but what I am gonna do is sign out. I'm gonna go back to the uh, control hub and log in as an admin again. I'm gonna do some more configuring on that user that I just verified. Hmm. Did I copy this wrong? I might have copied it wrong. There we go. So the next thing I want to do here is confirm that that user is verified. Uh, so we can see here now that Jack is an active verified user. Um, Jack has all the licenses set up that he needs. His WebEx calling is set up for extension dialing within the building of the site and location that he's at. So now I need to go into the contact center section here. Um, one more time really quickly on the left-hand side, when you log into the admin portal, there's this contact center section. Um, once I click in here, we have a user management section on the left-hand side and we have the contact center users. Um, you can see here that Jack is added, but he has no information here. So what I need to do now is edit that for Jack here. Um, so I need to toggle on this contact center piece within the contact center user management section and let content, the contact center solution know that it has a new user um, available for it in the control hub. Um, and now I can uh, sync the site here um, in the control hub on the contact center tool. Um, I can give uh, Jack a um, agent profile and I can select a multimedia profile here for him. Um, there is no skill, skill profile set up on my account yet, and I'll just leave everything else here default. Um, Jack has successfully been, I, actually, I forgot to add him to a team. So let's add him to a team for uh, the uh, agent type. So we'll add him to this team that came out of the box with my sandbox, um, and we'll save that. And then if we navigate over to our teams just to, for a sanity check here, I'm going to go to my team section. All right, so now for the sanity check, let's make sure that Jack has been added as a user and we can see the agent one email is here. So Jack is on a team. So what I'm going to do now that I know that Jack is on a team and he's in the, in the admin portal, I am going to log in to the agent desktop here. And I am going to um, make sure that Jack has access to the desktop. Um, so let me get that URL here. I do everything in incognito so it doesn't mesh with my cookies and session data on my regular browsing sessions that I do for work. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll put in Jack's login information. <clears throat> and I will log into the agent desktop as Jack who created a WebEx account. And as you can see, the desktop is firing up, hopefully no errors. And now I can sign in with my extension to my team and submit. And as you can see, I have access to the desktop. I can see that uh, the custom um, widget that I created for this agent is not hosted right now, so it's not showing, but the desktop knows about it, so it's showing me the icon. So I can definitely tell that this is my developer sandbox because I've been developing on it. Um, and there you go. That's how you set up a user. And we uh, will wrap this up. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video um, and reach out to us in the community.